but I believe that a balance, I, mean, I agree with quite a few things Jim said, um, I believe that a balance between environment and property rights is not impossible. I do belong to the Olympic Stewardship Foundation, and the reason I belong to it is that they focus on stewardship as, and voluntary stewardship as the means of taking care of our environment. Uh, that, to me, is a, a wonderful goal, and I think a very reasonable one. The people I know who own farms, who own property, really love their property, and rural people especially are very attached to their property. It is in their bones. It is not something that you trade by and sell. I was asked when I built my house, why wasn't gonna, I going to have a second bathroom? I said, because I don't want a second bathroom. Well, but it will spoil the resale value of your house. I'm not going to sell my house. I'm going to live there until I die. And I don't care what the next person does with it. You know, I mean, that's how rural people feel. This is their home. They live here. They are going to die here. You know, and they're going to take care of it if they know how to do that. We have a wonderful... Um, organization in our county that's funded by county government um, and the conservation district and they've been helping farmers and rural people for the last 35 years at least to implement best available science on their properties to protect streams, to protect wetlands, to uh, take care of the land and um, develop it in an appropriate way. Um, so we have the resources we need to educate our citizens to take care of their, their land properly. And they will be the best stewards. If we have them on board, we, okay, we, uh, we will be successful. You know, that that, really <laughs> wow. John Austin, you have two minutes. Thank you. I, I, I have to take issue with one of the uh, statements that was made that we just shot earlier about the best and brightest of our uh, young people leaving and never returning. And at the end of the table, we have a good example. They return when they're 60. They're <laughs> <laughs> retired. We're glad That's we have the problem. And, and I know that he is uh, still working for us. The question is basically about how do you balance property rights and the needs of a good example was in the way that the uh, county commissioners dealt with requirements for the uh, Shoreline Master Program. Uh, as you probably all know, we were given some suggestions by the Department of Ecology on what we should do, what we would like us to do in terms of the Shoreline Master Program. One example of that was they suggested to us that if a house that was within 150 feet uh, was destroyed by fire, that, that house would not be uh, rebuilt. Uh, we took input from the citizens and we struck that. So houses within 150 feet of the water can be rebuilt. A lot of people aren't even aware of this. I was outdoor building approximately 180 yards uh, north of here and the person who owns a house right in front of concrete was very upset because he thought his house would burn down and not be able to rebuild it. So he was delighted to hear that the county commissioners and listen to the population and make that change. <laughs> More questions to follow. Thank you. Okay, what issues are most important or what are the most important issues facing communities of District 3? And Johnson, you get to start. <laughs> well, I think the biggest thing I hear is that they don't feel represented in the in the commission, in the, the kinds of decisions that are being made by the county commissioners. They need jobs. Uh, one of the things that I think is very interesting uh, is that Wilson and Grinnan are equidistant from Palsco, Swim, and Port Townsend. They have no gas station. Guess what they have to do when they go shopping or for medical services or to work or any other reason why they might need something that's not available in their communities. They don't have neither one of those communities or Gardner. They don't have a store. 
a grocery store, a regular grocery store, uh, like a QFC or a Safeway, they don't have uh, a department store, they don't have a gas station, they don't have adequate medical facilities. They have to travel 45 minutes to an hour in any direction to get to those kind of facilities. They need infrastructure. They can't develop businesses or industry, light industry or any kind of industry, without water and probably some kind of sewage waste treatment facilities. They have to travel those distances to go for jobs. They are isolated in essence and they have to plan ahead in ways that you can only guess at. You know, if you're in Port Townsend and you can ride your bicycle to work, you have no idea what these people's lives are like. Yeah, and so they need local business, they need local jobs, they need local facilities, local services, at least at a minimal level, in order to be safe and healthy and live um, a happily stress free life. Well, awesome. District 3 is not uniform. So the most important elements in District 3 depend upon the area in which you're looking at. For instance, on the west end, what's extremely important is to keep the whole river road open. And this is a challenge. Uh, there are things, there are services that cannot be delivered to the far west end. I got a call from a woman the other day who wanted to know why uh, it took so long for a fire engine to get to her house. And she lived on Upper Indian Road, which is miles and miles away from any, any fire department. So, there, they need safety in the far end of District 3, and we just doubled the number of uh, police we have available out there. In Gardner, it's also a safety issue. As some of you know, we had to make some changes in order to allow uh, a better fire service in that area. In, in down in Brennan, uh, as, uh, as many of you know, one of the, uh, the uh, restaurants down there, the halfway house, uh, cannot expand the business because it doesn't have a sewer. And if you order coffee at one end of the restaurant, you have to stand. You can't sit. If you sit, you might have to use the restroom. So you can't do that. So we're working hard to get a sewer facility there using some of the finances that are available to the state park system uh, that's going to build a, a pipe that will improve in it. Uh, each area has its own particular needs. Port of Ludlow uh, has a need to figure out how can we safely get bicycles in and out of Port Ludlow. Right now, if you live there, you can't safely get out of Port Ludlow if you don't have a bicycle. And then individuals within each area have their own particular needs. Some people <coughs> wanted to increase the speed limit in Port Ludlow, some people wanted to decrease the speed limit, and felt very passionately about that. So each district, each area within the district is very different. In the very far south, now by Triton Cove, there's a concern that some houses are too close to the bluffs. Thank you, Jim Boyer.